wherever you find yourself this morning. Welcome to worship with Second Presbyterian Church in Nashville. I am Nolan Heisinga, one of the pastors here, and we're glad that you're with us. During the long pandemic season, it's been great to share leadership in new ways. And so today, in one of those, we are grateful to have Ashley McFall Irwin as our guest preacher. She is a friend to many of us here at Second, and she's a Presbyterian minister colleague. She serves a church in Setauket, New York, that's on Long Island. And she also serves on the board of More Light Presbyterians. More Light is a ministry with whom Second has had a long and fruitful and proud relationship. So we're glad to support them and for this gift of a guest preacher that they are offering today. To tell you a little bit more about More Light and its ministry, here is Alex McNeil. Hey everyone, I am the Reverend Alex Patchen McNeil, Executive Director of More Light Presbyterians. Thank you so much for participating in our virtual pulpit supply program. For folks who may not be familiar with More Light, we are a national organization working for the rights, dignity, and recognition of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, and asexual folks in the church and in the world. More Light's work in the world is about creating spaces where everyone knows they are beloved. And at the center of that work is a belief in a God of infinite abundance. Our interconnected programs and resources are designed to help individuals and congregations respond to God's abundance through policies and practices of transformative inclusion. More Light is bringing the lessons we've learned in over 40 years of advocating for inclusion and from our own lived experiences to the work yet to be done in the church, which is creating true equity for all God's children. We translate policy into practice, inclusion into seamless community, and concepts of intersectionality into a deep understanding of the reality of our shared human taproot of kinship. You are invited to learn more about More Light and get involved in our work. To do so, visit our website at mlp.org and follow us on social media at More Light Presby. We know that shining more light only happens in community, and we are so grateful to be part of this community with you. And now, let us worship God together. Where to charity and love dwell, God himself is there. And as we hear and love our Lord, the living God, so let us in sincerity love. 
Day by day, God leads us to the deep, cool pools of peace, to the green, lush fields of grace. Day by day, Jesus calls us to pour ourselves out in service, to anoint the stranger with hope. Day by day, the Holy Spirit shows us the community we could be, the family we are called to become. This day, let us worship God together. We are God's children now, but what we will be in the fullness of our time has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, we will be like Jesus the Christ and like saints of God. We consider how Jesus was revealed among us and we pray to be more like the Christ in every way. Please join me in prayer. Jesus embodied the unconditional love of God. May we be more like Jesus. Jesus fed those who were hungry. May we be more like Jesus. Jesus drew near to those living on the margins and excluded. May we be more like Jesus. Jesus brought healing and wholeness and community to those in need. May we be more like Jesus. Jesus hungered and thirsted for righteousness. May we be more like Jesus. Friends, through the love shown to us by Jesus, we can be sure that we are God's children now. The Spirit of Christ is gathered among us, 
and the forgiveness of Christ is revealed within us. We are becoming more and more like Christ each day. So let's live joyfully as God's people, saints and instruments of God's way. God's transforming peace is not for us alone, but for sharing with everyone around us. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. We invite you to share Christ's peace with people near you or send a word of peace to someone at a distance. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Herman. I'm a minister member of the Presbytery of Middle Tennessee and a friend of Second Presbyterian Church. You may have seen me on some of the Zoom calls. And I wanted to introduce you to a friend of mine that I work with at the Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital when I serve as a chaplain. Hi, my name is Succotash. Yeah, this is my work friend Succotash and he's excited to be here today. Aren't you excited? Oh yeah, I'm very excited. So Succotash, do you know what we're gonna talk about today? What we're gonna look at? Uh, no, not a clue. We're gonna look at loving one another. Okay, loving one another. Ooh, that sounds pretty deep. Uh, wh what's that mean? Well, let me kind of tell you, okay? The scriptures, oh, you mean the Bible? Yes, Sukkotash, the Bible. They tell us what it means to love one another. They do? Yes, they do. Uh, the scripture lesson that all of us are going to be listening, one of them that we're going to be listening to today, it starts out, it goes right to the point. It says, this is how we know what love is, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Wow, I didn't know that. He must really love us. Yeah, Jesus Christ really love us, loves us. So he did make a sacrifice. And that's another big word. Do you know what sacrifice means? Hmm. Doesn't it mean when you sacrifice, you give up a little bit of what you have so that so that everybody can can be happy and and live fully? Wow, Succotash, that's that's a lot. You you kind of brought the point home. Yeah, that's exactly what it means to sacrifice. But I I don't quite understand. What what will Succotash help me help me know what you don't understand? I don't understand what what sacrificing has to do with with what love looks like. Well, let me let me give you a, an example. Okay. Let's say, for instance, I was walking home from the bakery, okay, with a box of blueberry muffins. Oh, blueberry muffins. Oh, you know Succotash loves some blueberry muffins. Yes, yeah, Succotash, I do know you love blueberry muffins. Well, let's say that I'm walking home from the bakery with a box of steamy, hot, fresh blueberry muffins, and I see you on the side of the street. You spent the night there and because you got evicted from your apartment and you're looking very hungry and you see me and I see you and I recognize you. It's my friend Succotash and he, he needs something. He's hungry. And what, what do you think I should do, Succotash? Hmm. Well, Succotash thinks that you have two muffins and only one Lisa. So you should share your muffins with Succotash. Yes, yes, that's it, that's it. That is what love looks like. That's what sacrifice is. Love looks like sacrifice sometimes. And it means like giving up a little bit. So you give up one of your muffins because you have two muffins and only one Lisa. And you give up one of your muffins so that you and Succotash can be fed, can be happy. Is, is that what love looks like? I think that's a pretty good start, okay? So yes, Succotash, sometimes loving one another as God loves us means for us to sacrifice. And one way that we can sacrifice is we can give up something that we have so that others can also be happy, okay? Do you think you could try that this week? Oh, I certainly can. I have lots of things that Succotash can sacrifice or maybe even share so that both people can be happy. So uh, you, you still got two muffins and only one Lisa. Can Succotash have one of those? Sure, Succotash. Okay. All right.
Mm, that's a good muffin. Do you think that we could say a prayer for everybody um, about our week? Sure, sure. All right. Y you do the praying. Okay, I'll do the prayer. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, thank you. Um, thank you for being in our lives and being an example of what sacrifice means and helping us to know that sometimes sacrifice means sharing what we have, giving up a little bit of what we have so that both sides can be happy and fed and live life to the fullest. We ask that you'll help us do that this week and in the, the weeks ahead. In your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. Have a good week. Please join me in prayer. Holy Spirit, come as the fire and burn. Come as the water and cleanse. Come as the wind and refresh. Come as the light and reveal. Amen. Our first lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter four. Listen for God speaking to us through these words. The next day, the leaders, elders, and legal experts gathered in Jerusalem, along with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others from the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and asked, by what power or in what name did you do this? Then Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, answered, leaders of the people and elders, are we being examined today because something good was done for a sick person? a good deed that healed him? If so, then you and all the people of Israel need to know that this man stands healthy before you because of the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone you builders rejected. He has become the cornerstone. Salvation can be found in no one else. Throughout the whole world, no other name has been given among humans through which we must be saved. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. Friends, it is a joy to join with you virtually today. I am the Reverend Ashley McFall Irwin, and I am the Community Outreach Pastor at Setauket Presbyterian Church on Long Island, and I am a board member at More Light Presbyterians. We are grateful that we get to worship together in this time. So friends, let's turn to Scripture. Let's hear God's Word for us today from 1 John chapter 3 verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister or sibling in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God. And we receive from God whatever we ask because we obey God's commandments and do what pleases God. And this is God's commandment, that we should believe in the name of God's Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as God has commanded us. All who obey God's commandments abide in God and God abides in them. And by this we know that God abides in us by the spirit that God has given us. So where do you come from? 
And I don't just mean where did you grow up? I mean, what makes up all the holy intricacies of who you are? What's your story? What other stories intertwine with yours? A favorite saying of my grandmother's was, don't forget the bowl you were baked in. How many of you, like me, have done a lot more baking in this past year than ever before? Early on in the pandemic, I was one of those folks who learned how to bake sardo bread for the very first time. I've made types of bread that I can't buy in the store, but are from my homeland of Northern Ireland. And bread was not the only thing that I tried my hand at this past year. I thought it was time to improve my cheesecake making skills. Early on, I remember I baked this simple, but not so simple for me, New York style cheesecake, and it had this blackberry topping. Now, the cheesecake didn't really look the part. It cracked all over the place. The base was falling apart. I wasn't really thrilled with how it landed when I messily took it out and put it on the plate. But my wife, well, her response was much more gracious than the response I had to that messy slice of cheesecake. Erica took one bite and said, it tastes like love. It tastes like love. Friends, what tastes like love for you? I wonder what tastes like love to the writer of First John. Love is all around in this book. In First John 4, we read, God is love. And our passage today opens with the writer saying, we know love by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us. That bowl that we were baked in, like my granny said, well, we were baked in love. We abide in the love of God. We are rooted in the love of God. Love, deep love is at the center of our identity as children of God. And this love is deeply rooted in action. Love that lays down. Love that rises up from the grave. Love that is communal. Love that cares for neighbors. Love that cannot see an other in need and not act. Love compels action. Friends, verse 17 reads, How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister or sibling in need and yet refuses help? So that translation refuses help. It kind of loses the depth of emotion that the author, I think, is trying to get across. Now, refusing to help is not something that feels particularly Jesus-like, but it might be even deeper than that. So let, let's take a wee look at the Greek here. A more literal translation could be, how does the love of God abide in one who has the goods of the world and sees a sibling in need and yet closes up their insides, their guts, and their hearts to them? closes up their insides is a blocking off to their neighbor. You know, that, that, that blocking off, that putting up a wall, that feels a little stronger than just refusing to help. There's a blocking of love occurring with these folks that have the world's goods but are blocking off when they see their neighbor who is in need. There's a blocking of embodied energy that's flowing and probably a blocking of receiving love too. 
a cutting off that leads to individualism, defensiveness, all kind of char characteristics, characteristics of white supremacy. Hear this poem from the Reverend M. Barclay. Individualism is destructive. Send greed and selfishness away. That learned refusal to acknowledge your own need for help, let it be gone as well. When possible, counter all impulses towards privatized survival with acts of love, collective and expensive, with caring for others and accepting care. Remember, we need each other. Remember the needs of your neighbors, literal and metaphorical. Remember the vulnerable. Remember, we are in this together even when we don't act like it. People depend on your choices. You depend on the choices of others. This is sacred and terrible truth woven into our flesh. So let this time be an opening to all the sources of connection we have lost in this era of pushing down, of pushing through, and of pushing away and pushing the peace. Let all that is soft, all that is slow, all that is gentle, all that is kind, all that is careful, be welcome home in each of us. We have such creative, powerful, generous, and brave capacities within us. We can choose to do things differently. Friends, we can choose to do things differently. We can choose love. We can choose gutsy love. Love that is embodied. Love that does not block off our insides, does not block off the energy, but lets it flow. First John, 13, 1 John 3, 19 and 20 read, And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before God whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and God knows everything. Has your heart ever condemned you? I know that my heart has condemned me before. As a queer person of faith, I spent too many of my teenage nights condemning myself. Too many nights praying to God to take something away from me. Take this queerness, this gift away from me. Something that I now believe that God delights in. Friends, if your heart is condemning you today, I want you to hear that you are loved and that when our hearts no longer condemn, that then we come boldly with all of ourselves, all of our belovedness, all of our queerness, all of who we are. We come before the God who is love. Oscar Romero said this, let us not tire of preaching love. It is the force that will overcome the world. Let us not tire of preaching love. Though we see that waves of violence succeed in the drowning, the fire of Christian love. Love must win out. It is the only thing that can. And friends, though we see that waves of violence are all around us. Violence of white supremacy. Violence of transphobia of homophobia, violence that seeks to have power over. But love must win out. It is the only thing that can. 
transit style Easter. Love has won. Christ laid down his life and Christ is risen. Our hearts do not need condemnation. That is not God's plan of love for us. Christ laid down his life and Christ is risen. Gutsy, embodied love is our calling. God's love abides in us and in all creation. Remember I told you that favorite phrase of my grandmother at the beginning? Remember the bowl you were baked in? Friends, you were baked in a bowl of love. You are bread bubbling up with the spirit of God who calls us to a gutsy love. A love that stands in the face of death and says, no, it is love that wins. God abides in you. And when the world would try to tear us apart, when the world might try to have our hearts condemn us, well, then we come to God boldly, spilling out our hearts and our guts and all that we have, knowing that God will hold us and send us on our way saying, little children, Let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and in action. Friends, what truth and action is God calling you to today? Go and do it. Go and be it. Thank God for resurrection. Thank God for one another. Never forget the bowl you were baked in. A bowl of God's love and liberation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, friends. It's time now for our prayers together. And when we pray together at a time of distancing, we gather our hearts so that they may flow toward God, God in whom we live and move and have our being. Before this season of separation, we were able to physically feel that flow, to taste it, to taste love as Ashley has said this morning, taste love in each other's presence and in the presence of God. 
we look forward to doing that again fully. But remember, our bond of prayer has not weakened. It has not diminished. It is strong. We did not create that bond. That's why it stays strong. We didn't create it. It is pure gift. It is a divine gift. And like the gift of love, it remains. As our eyes have opened and even more, but we have become even more aware of the brutality and the beauty of our world. Our bond of prayer grows stronger. So let us nurture that bond now. I invite you as we begin to take a couple of breaths together, slow breaths, and we will do that as you breathe in, I will count to four, and then we'll hold it for the count of four, and then breathe out for four, and hold that for four. Just listen to my voice. You may close your eyes or just gaze gently at something. Let's begin. Empty your, empty your lungs first. Breathe out. And now breathe in. One, two, three, four, and hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe out. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. Hold. One, two, three, four. And breathe out. One, two, three, four. Most holy one and gracious God, creator and lover of the earth, our home, and home of every being born of your imagination. Draw us into your spirit. Feed us through your mercy. We give thanks for this home, where spring comes dancing on breezes, watering our thirsty spirits, where love continues to form and shape us. We confess there are days when we feel like butterflies emerging with new wings, seeking yesterday's sun, our future still unknown. We want to hurry, but someone says wait. We want to rush into the arms of friends, but you call us to keep perfecting the art of the gaze. You teach us many things, and sometimes it's hard to stay receptive. We think we know what we want, when that is not within reach, you are there in all of it, even now. In the words of our brother, Howard Thurman, we ask that you will keep alive in us the forward look, the high hope, the onward surge. Let us not be frozen by the past or by the fears and griefs of the present. Grant us your sense of the future. O oh God, open our eyes and give us the will to live your vision of a realm where governance of state and governance of church practice grace as their guide, where laws and polity transform as justice reveals herself, where the ebb and flow of life are not hindered by leaders and laws which, who stand in the way of transformation. Show us how to usher in a world where we are united in spirit and body, inviting and working toward the wholeness of all creation. Oh God, so many have been wounded, disheartened, and depleted. So many have been killed. Give us the courage to see beyond our sorrow so that our gaze brings healing. Cleanse our intentions. Teach us how to throw ourselves into the fruitful work of your spirit so that our hands may plant mercy. And when our hearts cry out, may we also shout with confidence that you are near. Show us your way in these fragile but hopeful days, that our hope may encompass your wide purpose, that we may embrace your way and follow. For we pray in the beautiful name of Jesus, 
the one whose life gives us breath and meaning today and always, and who taught us to pray words such as these in our time. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and all that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echoes through our universe. May the way of your justice be followed by the people of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and trust, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. one of our ruling elders, blessed by session, convened a task force to think and talk and pray about reparations. Reparations is the word that we use to, to cover the task of thinking through what we need to do to make amends, how we can be a part of the repair and the healing of our social fabric, which has been torn, so torn by our history of racism and privilege in this country and in our church. 
and specifically in the Presbyterian Church USA. After discussing some of the ways that we can devote financial resources to this work, we agreed that an important step is to look at ourselves, to become more aware of how those of us who are white have benefited in our lives from that one fact, our color, to look more closely than many of us have before at this, our privilege, but to do it together, speaking and sharing as we realize what privilege and whiteness mean in our world. These stories are deeply spiritual, getting us in touch with moments in our lives when God has opened our eyes, literally. We can put down the illusion that we have got racial injustice figured out or that we've never really been a part of it. One person's story can have a profound effect on another person's awareness. And we have realized that we need to do more of that sharing, discovering ourselves in the process listening to ourselves and discovering each other and learning more about each other as a community. So you, you are invited on two Wednesday nights in May, May 5th and May 12th, to gather on Zoom and to break into small groups so that we can tell our stories, share them. Four to five people will be in a group and really listen to each other listen to each other's stories, tell our own about the experiences, the moments when somehow we have been moved into a new awareness. It may be a moment from your, from your youth. It may be something that happened last week when a light bulb went on for you, just to help us all wake up a little more. We also hope that out of this time will come a form of a statement that we can put out as who we are in the world today in relation to this worldwide struggle against the ongoing pandemic of racism, poverty, and all the forms of inequality. So please, please join us. We really do need you. And you can get the link for this, for this meeting, these two meetings, if you would like it in advance from Emily at secondpresbyterian.net, or you can wait for the email to come in the e-news the week of the events with the Zoom link there. Also, this morning we are so grateful to More Light Presbyterians and Alex Patchett McNeil for their work in providing pulpit supply opportunities to churches, More Light churches and others, anyone who wants this wonderful service around the country. And we give a special thanks to Ashley McFall Irwin. Wasn't it wonderful to see Ashley? again and to hear her bring the word of love, the proclamation and challenge that she brought to us this morning to recommit ourselves to Christ's call for justice. Next week we will celebrate the sacrament of communion at 11 a.m. on a Zoom call as we have been doing at the first of the month and you'll see that link in your emails, in your e-news. And now let's uh, Let's see Ashley one more time as she gives us a benediction for the week ahead. Friends, as we go to the rest of our days, go knowing that you are deeply loved, that you are held in the embrace of God, and that, friends, that love wins. Love has won. Love will win over and over again. So go out into the world and love. And now may the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.